Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And the month is winding down. Uh, soon we'll be talking about a different month, which is August. And we're thankful that we are here today. Today on the program, we'll be looking at the fact that the president, Tinubu, has ordered NNPC to sell crude to Dangote Refinery in Naira. That seems to be very good news. And uh, more momentum as youths begin protest ahead of August 1. That is also a hot topic that we'll be dealing with this morning. Of course, we're going to have our top trending issues, uh, issues that captured our interest in the course of the last 24 hours. We also are going to be looking at what the papers say. Uh, what are those headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our newspapers? That's how it's going to be today. And of course, there'll be some spices here and there to make your day a wonderful one. Once again, welcome to the program uh, this morning, the 30th day of July 2024. If it were not a, a month with, 20, with 31 days, today would have been the end of uh, the month. But tomorrow, Hopefully, we'll be together again to celebrate the end of the seventh month of uh, the year 2024. And hopefully, uh, August will come in peace and go in peace. Uh, but before we continue, let's just uh, take a breather and look at what the quote for today is. Don't become a slave to technology. Manage your phone. Don't let it manage you. That's according, according to Richard Branson. Don't become a slave to technology. Manage your phone. Don't let it manage you. Uh, wise words from Richard Branson there. And uh, it's very apt. Uh, a lot of us, when we go to bed, the last thing we see is our phone. And when we wake up, the first thing we see is our phone. Uh, we are pressing the phone all day round. Uh, we are on a bus, we cannot make friends, we are talking to people we have never met instead of making friends with the people that are sitting next to us. We are on the uh, dining table, we are pressing our phones, we are in a family gathering, we are pressing our phones. Nobody is bonding anymore and all our time is taken by the phones. Uh, we have no time to pray, we have no time to bond, we have no time to do what we're supposed to do. We are only buried in our phones, uh, especially now that we have games on our phones and everybody wants to play a game or wants to uh, tap, tap out some money as some of these games are these days. And then you bury yourself inside this phone. At the end of the day, you're losing productive hours. So use your phone wisely that's uh, the bottom line of everything use your phone wisely don't be a slave to it when you hear addiction addiction doesn't only mean that you drink too much or you smoke too much or you do hard drugs and all that addiction could also be a habit that is taking your time your productive time uh, uselessly uh, most of the time so like you're press pressing your phone 24 hours there are people who do not put their phones down uh, so long as they they spar on that phone they'll be pressing it they don't have any care in the world about whatever going, goes on around them they just care about what is inside that phone that may not be happening in their vicinity so don't be a slave to technology manage your phone and don't let your phone manage you even the good book says sabbath was made for man and not man for sabbath so no matter how important you think a thing is it was only made to make you happier and a better person don't think that is the other way around. So if Sabbath was made for man, then how much more a phone that was supposed to be for communication and for connectivity, and then now you're overusing it because there's something like overusing the phone. Everything that you do, you have to do it with moderation. Even the eating that you're supposed to eat, eat with moderation. Otherwise, you'll become a gluten, and if you're a gluten, that amounts to being a sinner as it is. So, well, manage your phone. Don't let the phone manage you. Be the lord of your phone. Don't be a slave to your phone. 
Uh, those are the wise words of uh, Robinson this morning. Okay, we'll go straight ahead to uh, bring you the top trending issues. IGP orders officers to protect protesters nationwide. That's the first one that we're looking at. The Inspector General of Police, Kayo De Batokum, has directed the Deputy Inspector General of Police Operations and Intelligence to the Assistant Inspectors General of Police, AIGs, uh, in charge of Zonal Police Headquarters, and the Commissioners of Police CPs in charge of state commands across the country to protect protesters. Egberto Kuni issued this directive in response to a request by human rights lawyer Ebun Oluod Adeburowa, who sought police protection for end bad governance protesters. The directive conveyed in a letter dated July 29, 2024, signed by his principal staff officer, C.P. Johnson Adeola, emphasizes the importance of safeguarding demonstrators while maintaining public order. The IGP has also scheduled a meeting with Adeborua at the Nigeria Police Force Headquarters Abuja on July 30, 2024, that's today, to discuss further details and ensure adequate arrangements for the planned protests. Okay, um, I'm glad that the IGP has uh, made a U-turn and uh, called for the protection of protesters. Uh, protesters who want to be peaceful and just make a statement to the government about what they're feeling in Nigeria should be protected. And the IG uh, didn't do well when he said that uh, they were going to come out in full force and show the protesters their might. More or less, in small words, that's what he said. And that's what a lot of governors are saying uh, don't come and protest in our state, don't do this, don't do that. In the first place, if anybody understands the protest, the protest is not about the state governments. The protest is about the federal government, policies that were made at the center that are affecting Nigerians. For instance, the unification of the dollar naira, it's, it's not a state thing. The uh, subsidy removal, it's not a state thing. And so many other things that have been promised by the uh, federal government that have not been done, those are not state things. So the protest is not about states. So if someone is protesting in Lagos, for instance, it not, it's not because Lagos is not doing well, but it's because they want to send a message to the center. So to say that Lagos or Cross River or Yobe are, are states that are doing well, so people should not protest there, that means you don't even understand what the protest is about. So I'm glad that the IGP has made a turnaround to say that they should be protected. And Another thing I'd like to point out is I'm so happy that people are protesting against protests, which means you're protesting about, about protests. I don't know how that even sounds, but if this protest against protest is peaceful, then the protest that was scheduled and uh, time was given is supposed to be peaceful, except something else, something sinister by some people who are trying to use that uh, against the people of Nigeria are going to make it so dangerous for Nigerians and make it so volatile and all that. So if this process before the protest is peaceful, then the other one could have been peaceful as well. So I don't know why everybody's warning. It will be hijacked, it will be this. Do you know something we do not know? But even then, I'm happy. The people will be protected. They will go out, they will make their uh, grievances heard. And I use this opportunity to beg the people of Nigeria. We are all hungry. It's not the opposition and everything. But while we are making a statement, let's be sure that what we have already had is protected. For instance, if the federal government has bought a bus, you should not destroy a bus because you are asking for more buses. It doesn't make sense. So whatever our national or state assets should be guarded jealously while you're making your demonstrations, while you're making your voice, voices heard, uh, all of us are in support of making a statement in whatever way, whether we are writing letters, we've seen people like writing letters to the president, they may not be on the street, but they have done what they know how best to do. And some people are going to go on the street, some people are going to meet with, like we've heard this morning, um, a senior lawyer is going to meet with the IGP to talk about other things, details about the protests and all that. So people in their various capacities are doing what they can do. So if your own capacity is to go to the street, go to the street and peacefully make your statement and then go back home and make sure that everything that we already have is not destroyed so that we don't start from square one. In the first place, 
if we are starting from square one, is going to affect us. And in the second place, if you are talking about corruption and you don't want people to uh, be corrupt anymore, pe people in government to be corrupt anymore, and you spoil those assets, you are also giving them an opportunity to even be more corrupt. Because if you burn one car, uh, the money that they will use to buy another car that they already had before you're burning it will even be maybe double of the money that you was spent to buy this one. So if you understand what I'm saying. So don't give those people you are trying to prevent from being corrupt the opportunity to be corrupt and do not spoil our national assets or state assets or local government assets. Our collective assets should be protected. Lives and properties should be protected. Make a statement, carry your placards and all that, but do not fight, and do not burn, do not maim, do not do anything that will be violent. And for those people who will want to come and ferment trouble, uh, ferment trouble, I hope that the police will capture them. We've, we're glad that the police is already saying they have intelligence that some people want to, want to disrupt the, the, the protest. I think this is the best time to pick them up so that they don't even get to that day of disrupting the protest. It's not to wait for, for that day to come and then you say, we told you. So if you know them, why not pick them up now uh, with credible intelligence that you've already had, with evidences that they were the ones planning to disrupt the, the uh, protest and all that. You can do that. You have that capacity. So kudos to the police. Uh, the second thing is that the federal government has uh, established um, centers nationwide where 50 kg bags of rice are being sold for 40,000 naira each as part of its efforts to address the high cost of living. Minister of Information and National Orientation Mohamed Idris announced this initiative while briefing on the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting. Idris highlighted that these measures are part of the Tinubu administration's efforts to meet the demands of the planned nationwide protest and make such protests unnecessary. The Federal Executive Council believes that many of the protesters' demands are being addressed through government interventions, such as the distribution of rice and students' loans and appeals to protesters uh, to reconsider their actions in light of these measures. I like what is happening in the first place when the federal government sent rice to a lot of to all the states, 36 states. Uh, most of the states had just uh, 1,200 bags <laughs> or of, of rice and so on and then you discover that you don't even need to do a research you know that 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 will not even be enough for one village and all that and even then there were some government officials that were still selling this rice we saw videos on the internet where where this rice was being rebanked uh, from the bags that the federal government provided the rice with uh, they rebacked this rice and they were selling in some warehouses and people invaded those places and did what they did so now if the federal government has opened these centers, another thing is to make sure that somebody doesn't just go and get all this rice. Because some people, uh, when it happens like this, they can go give some people some money because not everybody can afford 40,000 Naira. But if that rice is sold for 40,000 Naira for a very long time, the people who hoard this rice may not be, uh, may not make any gains. So they will, they will see it as unnecessary to go and hoard the rice. But right now, I know that there are people who may buy in bulk if they don't allow them to buy in bulk, they will be passing through proxies that may not have 40,000 Naira to be buying this rice. And then they will go and hide the rice and be selling at exorbitant prices. So monitoring should be a very, very important thing at this time so that uh, they make sure that the people who really need this rice will get the rice. And even if um, you cannot afford it, if your neighbor has it sufficient, then uh, we'll begin to see a lease of life somehow because there are people who were also funding some families, taking care of some families, supporting some families, because the things are high now, they cannot do that anymore. But if these people can uh, now afford rice for 40,000 Naira per bag, that means these people they were supporting can also have a few cops or a few mudus or a few, a few robbers of, uh, or paint robbers of rice and all that, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's a good thing for the federal government. But at this point, I'd like to just make an appeal, and I've said it a lot of times, I'll make an appeal to the president. It, it may seem like if the president is on seat and he sends his minister of information or for information, it's going to be a very good thing. After all, you have people doing the job and all that. There are some things that the president himself needs to talk. I would have wanted a situation where 
like today at, at least the president addresses the nation on by himself tells the nation apologizes to the nation even if he thinks that he's working for the nation tell the people i see what is happening and i'm sorry i've been saying this all the time he's he has been saying it that uh, he knows that nigerians are suffering but tell them again that i know you are suffering but this is what i've done this is what i've done and this is what i'm going to do in this this x y number of months to come give me some time please it's humility when people were voting for the president he was begging the people. Anybody who is voted into any, any position of authority practically begs the people for votes. So you don't enter there and then you think that the people are beneath you. I'm not saying that's what the president is thinking, but I'm, I'm appealing to the president to make a pronouncement, talk to the people. If you can't do it today, tomorrow is another opportunity. The protest is supposed to happen on the 1st to the 10th. Talk to the people of Nigeria. Let them know that you have even heard that they are planning to protest if your wife tells you that i'm going to park out of your house in the month of september because you've done this you've done that you've done that the the wise thing to do is to sit down with her appeal to her talk to her well not threaten her that you're going to return my bread price you are going to do this all the money you you are, you are going to pay me for the time you have been living in my house you're going to pay rent you don't do that if you love your wife you have your, the interest of your wife at heart, you want your family to stay together, sometimes you apologize for no just cause because you know that you should know better. So now people who are saying they're going to protest give a date. It is not enough to say that oral festival that has been happening in February or March every year will now happen in the, the heat of the rainy season and people are saying the timing is wrong. Even if it is true, the timing is wrong because Everybody just feels that it is so that people will not protest. It's happening on the same 1st to 10th or 15th. Uh, what kind of coincidence is that? The student union body is going to do a peaceful march from the 1st to the 10th. What kind of coincidence is that? That is not enough to make people not to protest. Please, Mr. President, our president, talk to the nation. Make the tension go down. Your lieutenants are threatening everybody. Your lieutenants are pointing accusing fingers at everybody, but everybody else is hungry, whether we like it or not. And they say a hungry man is an angry man. But Nigerians are not difficult to placate, as it were. Just tell them what you're going to do, show working, as we say it in Nigeria, and maybe every other thing shall be added on to us. Even if they still go on the streets, they will know that it is useless, but they still just needed to make that statement. So please, Mr. President, address Nigerians. It's not enough for Idris to come and talk to us. It's not enough for Ajurin Gilali to talk to us. It's not enough for anybody else to talk to us. It's not enough for Wike to come and be threatening everybody. But if the president talks to us, he's the father of this nation, I'm sure the tension will be doused to a lot of, um, to a, a degree that is uh, acceptable and that will not lead to any chaos in Nigeria. We don't want another NSAS. Because if it begins now, and then one violence leads to the other, maybe a life is lost, the, the people who are close to the person whose life is lost will rise up one way or the other, and it will continue like that, and we don't know where it's going to end. We don't want the Kenya experience here. We don't want the Arab rising here in Nigeria. We want a Nigeria that can resolve its own issues. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, the National Open University of Nigeria, NOWN, has abruptly canceled its LLB law program, leaving many final year students devastated. Ade Oludoku, uh, who had invested uh, over two million naira and was close to graduating, is deeply affected by the sudden termination, exacerbating his financial and emotional struggles. Bertram, a student from Port Harcourt, faced severe personal challenges, including kidnapping and system crashes. But despite his efforts and appeals, the program ended without resolution. Sadiku, who completed his uh, uh, coursework with his wife's support, is calling for intervention to allow students to finish their degrees following the program's unexpected halt. Now, Noun's program's closure is linked to ongoing accreditation issues and regulatory conflicts over part-time law degrees. Legal experts criticized the decision, suggesting alternative solutions should have been provided for students nearing completion. 
uh, whatever the reason might be, uh, those little examples that were, be, were given are just a few. I'm sure there are hundreds and hundreds of other people who will suffer a lot and who have suffered a lot to get this law degree. But whatever the excuse might be, like the experts are saying, please look for alternative um, alternatives to this so that these people can finish, especially those who are in their final or the, a year, just one or two more years or so uh, to the end so so that they can finish it. I don't know if it's a transfer is possible. I don't know if uh, expediting action to for their accreditation is possible. I don't know what you need to do, but consider what these people have suffered. It's not as if they did something illegal and that's why you're expelling them. They were going religiously to school. They were paying their fees. They were selling their fortunes as it, as it were to make sure that they get their dream degree. So find a way around it, please. Whatever it will take, um, it will be the, the right way to go. Uh, that's just what I can say at this point. Well, that will be all for um, uh, top trending issues. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and the headlines that made it to the front pages. Stay with us.